I speak to you in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Well, some of you may know, because you texted me last night, um, that persistence um, actually does have its benefits because Tennessee beat Alabama last night. So, it took 15 years, but we did it. All right, all right. Now, I hate persistence. When I was growing up, my dad would always say to me, if you want to get better, you have to be persistent. And then I went to college, and my first college professor uh, of, of, of seminar uh, said, um, if you want to really benefit from the program at St. John's, you have to be persistent. And, uh, and then I went to uh, the Dominicans, and my novice director, Father Michael Kites, said, it, it, it is not easy to be a Dominican. You have to be persistent in your prayer and your love and your study. You have to be persistent. And, um, and so my whole life, people have been telling me that I have to be persistent if I want the good, good, good things of life. And uh, perhaps they had all been reading uh, chapter 18 of, of the Gospel of Luke. Um, but, but I think that Jesus has something more in store for us than just kind of wagging his finger and telling us to be persistent. So we're going to go into this, we're going to go into this uh, parable and try and figure out what is it about persistence that Jesus really wants us to have when he's talking about prayer. So Jesus starts off just kind of going into the parable, right? Hey, look, you, you disciples need to be persistent, right, in your prayer. And he says, look, Here's the parable, right? There was in a certain town, there was an unjust judge, right? He neither, he neither um, respected God or, 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 or feared God, nor did he uh, respect people, right? So when you hear that, right, he's setting this up, right? In other words, this, this judge, this judge didn't follow the law, right? Because we, we understand, what does Jesus say? The summation of the law is really to love God with all your heart, mind, soul, and being, and to love your neighbor as yourself. And basically, he's setting this up, and he's saying, look, there was a judge who didn't, who, who didn't even care about the law. Can you imagine a judge who really doesn't even care about the law? Well, here he is. Here's the guy, right? And, um, and so... Uh, he is pestered. He's pestered by this, this widow, right? And if you want to know where the widow lives, she lives in my basement, right? Okay. Right. So, so if you want to know where the widow lives, right, the widow lives in my basement. Uh, did you get me the mushrooms that I said? Um, uh, so anyway, so, so uh, she, she is persistent in asking for justice from her opponent. I know, Betty. I, I'm going to pay for it later today, right? I know. I, I, I went there. I knew I shouldn't go there, but I went there anyway, right? Okay. So, um, so anyway, I, I see that, Barbara, okay? None of that. Um, so anyway, uh, she keeps being persistent, and finally, finally, she says, I want justice, I want justice, I want justice, um, and, and finally, uh, he says, look, I don't respect God and I don't respect people, but this, this widow is so annoying and so persistent that I'm going to give her what she asks so that she will leave me alone. I will just give in to her demands and that will be that. And so Jesus says, look, look, if even the widow can get justice out of an unjust judge, right, well, how much more, how much more grace and, and, and love from God can you get who, who wants to lavish you with all of this stuff? He wants to give you justice. He wants to give you love. He wants to give you grace. How much more could this be, right? But you have to be persistent. Now, on the one hand, we have to understand this, right? His notion of persistence 
comes after the fact that God is giving us all, God wants to give you all of this grace. It's sitting there right out in front of you. You just have to say, yes, I want some of that, but not just once, again and again and again. You gotta open your eyes and say, I would like that. Now, we all know, we all know that you, if you're going to get better at something, in any meaningful way, you have to have persistence, right? At a certain level, you're going to bump up against something that is difficult and and, 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 and is going to take persistence. And on one hand, that's where I always go, you know, I like the idea of learning math. I don't like the actual learning of math, right? I want to already have 14 years of calculus under my belt but I don't want the pain and suffering of 14 years of studying calculus, right? He said, but Jesus is saying something even more profound than this. It's not that persistence is about learning information, that's not, or learning even a skill, right? What he's saying is something really profound. We are persistent in prayer because ultimately, it's not just about that end, right? Like we got to the end of our life and somehow miraculously Neil and I were holy at the end of our life because we'd been praying all day long, right? Right, it's not that he said, you're on a journey with, with me, right? You're on a journey with your Lord and Savior, right? I'm inviting you into the kingdom of God here. What I want you to realize is this journey is sacred. You keep thinking that you're following me because at the end of the day, you'll get over here to some really cool place, right? He says, no, 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 no. I want you to be persistent in prayer because if you're persistent in prayer, what you will realize is that in the doing of the prayer, you will be transformed and realize that the very place you are in now is filled with grace and love and a redemption. If you keep thinking that you're following me because I'm taking you to an end point over there, you won't realize that right now is sacred. Right now is holy. Right now is where you need to be with me. All of my life up to a certain point, I kept thinking about, well, you know, in five years, I'll be in a better place from now. I just got to work hard, and five years, I'll be in a better place than I am now. And then I got to those, I got five years into the future, and I kept thinking to myself, well, in five more years, I'll be exactly where I want to be, right? And then five more years, I'll be exactly where I want to be. And then I woke up, and I was 50 years old, and I realized, boy, I'm going downhill. There are no more five more year plans, right? I better get on with the practice of actually living my life as God would want me to live my life. If I keep putting it off thinking that I'm following Jesus into the next five years, I will never be grateful for what it is that God is giving me right now. And this is part of what, 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 Paul, what, what Jesus was saying to his disciples. You keep thinking that when everything is better, then you can be better, right? You know, five years in the future, that's when it will be good to pray, right? In five more years, that's when it will be good to pray. Jesus said, no, no, no. It, 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 the world is always falling apart. The world is always filled with distraction. But the world is also always filled with God's gracious offer of love and healing and redemption right now. This is where you are as disciples. Be joyful. Love where you are because God is opening up to you all that he has to offer you. Every, every Saturday evening, I think to myself, I am so excited. I wonder who's going to show up tomorrow morning. Who of my friends is going to show up? And we are going to be able to pray together and love one another and give glory and praise to God and how wonderful it is. And then the first person I meet is Katie Murphy. Okay, but she loves me. 
And then, and then people are coming in, and I see, I see Cuddy, and she comes in, and I say, like, I haven't seen her for like five weeks, and I'm like, oh my God, two months, right? Oh, two weeks, three weeks, okay, yeah. And then I see Catherine and Jack, I haven't seen them for I don't know how long, right? And, and, and it's like God is bringing my friends right in front of me to pray with me, and I'm so amazed. And then, and then Susanna, I was like, I haven't seen her for how long? And here she is, and it's amazing. And then I saw Pamela and Mark back there. And I was like, wow, right here in this place, God is at work. I don't have to wait for another five years. We are called right here, right now, to realize what God is doing in our lives together as the body of Christ. Today is the day of persistence, not not the persistence that gives us bad backs and creaky knees or bad eyesight because we're reading too many legal briefs. But today is the day that we open our hearts to God's love. And this is what Jesus is saying. Each day is a gift with many gifts given out. Be persistent in opening your heart in prayer so you receive what it is that God wants you to have and wants you to be. How awesome is that? I mean, look, Kathy, if you waited to pray until you had a new leg. (laughs) Yeah, that's right, exactly. How ridiculous is that, right? And Jack, if you waited to pray until you could do 50 push-ups at one time, when would you pray? All day long. Oh, all day long, that's right. (laughs) That's right. Colonel Jack, that's right. Here's the great gift, and that's the Eucharist at work here. Jesus is calling all of us up to that altar to be transformed by love, to be persistent in the journey, to keep saying, yes, Jesus, I understand we are in a holy place. Yes, Jesus, I know that God is bestowing us with all of the gifts of love and and redemption and joy. I know that it is right here at this moment. We can put off our lives forever. We can put it off because we're waiting for the right time. We can put it off because we think that somehow over the horizon, there's where God is. Right here. I got two achy knees this morning, but God is here. I know that it's not the perfect time for prayer for any of us. But here we are, together, and here is God with all the grace needed for us to be redeemed and loved and to be reminded that we indeed are God's creation. This is the good news. And you all, here this morning, are proof of that good news lavished out upon all of us.